What's up guys, so today I wanna to show you guys a very cool product called the Loop Deck Creative Tool. You may have remembered a couple months ago, I did a video on the Loop Deck Plus, which quickly became one of my favorite video editing tools. So Loop Deck reached out and asked me if I wanted to get early access to try out the Loop Deck Creative Tool and provide feedback for them. So I wanna share with you some of the things I really like about this panel compared to the Loop Deck Plus and why it's become now my new favorite editing panel. So let's go ahead and begin. Now you'll notice Notice there's a big difference between this and the Loop Deck Plus, mainly that this is a lot smaller. It's about a quarter of the size, but most importantly, the biggest difference is that it dynamically changes depending on how you edit. And let me explain further what I mean by that. So for example, you'll notice if I jump onto, let's say Mac OS, if I go into Safari, automatically things change. If I go into Premiere Pro, this dynamically changes depending on what I'm using. This also works with Adobe Audition, it works with Final Cut, and a slew of other applications too. Now what's really neat or what I really like about this is how you can customize your editing panel to really fit your workflow. So for example, you'll notice here, um, right now if I push on tools, this will automatically or dynamically adjust and I've kind of programmed this the way I like to edit. Now you might say, Armando, a lot of this stuff, you can kind of create shortcuts, and that was kind of the feedback that I saw a lot of people saying from the other video is, I have my own shortcuts, and to that I say, yeah, you can do that, but this allows you to customize it even further because they have certain APIs and they work with Adobe to allow you to do even further things than just shortcuts, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. So for example, you'll notice here, I have these tools, and these are the tools that you see here on the left-hand side or on the, in the middle here. So if I wanna create a text tool, I can just push on text. Um, you can also swipe. So this has gesture base, so if I can swipe left or right. So essentially what this has is different pages. And you can also set up different workspaces. So for example, if I tab back, you'll notice that I have editing, color, and audio. Once again, I set this up, but you can set this up however you want. So if I go into color, this will bring up my color tab. So you'll notice that everything dynamically changes, including this little center wheel, which now shows shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we'll jump into the whole color part in a second here. So let me go back to the editing workspace here. Uh, so right now, one of the things that we often do is we use footage with different resolutions. So for example, we're editing 1080p footage from the USR. We also work with Blackmagic, which films in 6K, so we're often changing things. And for example, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this footage here. We have some 1080p slow motion. I'll drop this into my timeline. And here's a little footage here. Now, normally, if I want to scale this up, I would have to go into scale and then go to 200% because this is 1080p footage, and that's great. A lot of times, if it's like C200 footage, we have to go to 94%. If it's black magic, we have to remember it's like 56.5%. It's just a mess. I mean, I kind of remember these because these are stuff that we are constantly working with. But what if I could just push a button and it, it can automatically just scale to the appropriate size or the resolution that we are working with, which is 4K? Well, you can do that. So I'll show you guys how easy it is to do that. So right now I don't have it programmed because I wanna demonstrate how you can do it. So if I jump into the Loop Deck Configuration tool, you'll notice here on the right hand side there's the editing uh, pages that I was referring to. So I have my editing basics and tools. So once again, just to demonstrate that, it's these right here, tools and edit basics, and I can also swipe. But for example, I don't really use ripple delete, so I wanna get rid of ripple delete. So what I'll do is I'll grab ripple delete from here and then just drop it off to the window here and it'll delete by itself. What I wanna do is I wanna change this to scale. So I'll type in scale there and I could do scale to frame size. That's exactly what I want. So I'll drag that over and then bam, as soon as I jump into Premiere, scale to frame size, which is great. So now rather than going to effects, trying to figure out what's the resolution, it doesn't really matter because I can just push here, scale to frame size, boom, there it goes just like that, and I can apply that to all of my footage, which just saves a ton of time. Now, when I go into the color grading uh, stuff, which is my favorite, I can just push on two, and now it brings up my color workspace. And from here, I can do a lot of different things. For example, I can adjust color temperature, similar to the Loop Deck Plus. So you'll notice here, uh, the temperature is changing. 
Now, another thing that this allows you to do is, remember, this is like a quarter of the size. So you're gonna say, Armando, I need more of these knobs to adjust more things. Well, no problem, you can just swipe up or swipe down. So remember, this is temperature, if I swipe, if I swipe up or swipe down, it changes. So now, this was temperature, now I can change it to exposure. So you'll notice, look at the exposure. I'm overexposing or I can underexpose and it works really, really well. One of my other uh, favorite things to do, and this I actually programmed ahead of time, and this is not part of Adobe, so you don't, you can't really do this unless you custom program it, is bypass Lumetri color effects. So for example, a lot of times when I do color or color grades, I like to see the before and after. So if I push on bypass uh, color effects, you'll notice that it goes back to the original image, and I can just push that back, and then it shows me my color grade, which is very useful. Again, you can create shortcuts for these, but this just makes it so much easier because I have everything here laid out and it's just more comfortable to use. If I go back to my editing um, tab, if I go here and start editing, you'll notice that this wheel changes. And a lot of times I like to scrub, I can scrub forward. If I wanna scrub back, this little editing wheel is very useful and I can just let it hang, pause it. It just works so much easier than using a keyboard. Now the beautiful thing is that this doesn't necessarily need to replace your keyboard. This is more of an extension to your keyboard just like the mouse. Now something interesting in my situation is where Connor is doing most of my editing and I'm doing the color grading part. Uh, he uses the keyboard for the most part but sometimes wishes that there were certain shortcuts or features on the keyboard that just don't exist. This is where the loop deck creative tool comes into place because he doesn't really have to fully commit to an editing panel. He can use this whenever he needs it and it's just an extension where for me, I use this the most time and I can also create custom workflows for me and he can create his own and we can both use this without having to really kind of push things aside. So let's go ahead and jump into the color workspace because I feel this is where it really shines for me. So you'll notice if I push on shadows, the large wheel changes. If I push on midtones and highlights, it dynamically changes. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to just have this smaller configuration without having a bunch of wheels. And I can, again, dynamically change this. So for example, I feel like my highlights are a little uh, overexposed, so I can just tone this down a little bit and then there we go, that looks a little bit better. My midtones, I can bring that up a hair. And you'll notice that it starts to change these and it makes it really simple. Now, if I wanted maybe a little bit more orange, let's say for example, I wanted more of an orange look, I can use my finger, this is really cool, and I want you guys to see this. In fact, let me just switch this over to the color wheels. So you see my midtones, when I move my, my finger around, this almost acts like the mouse cursor, but I can really pinpoint where I want it. So for example, if I want more of a, let's just say orange look, I can do that here, I can just move that here. If I want something a little bit more blue, I can just move my finger here, there it goes. And that's really cool, if I wanna reset, just double tap, and then it resets everything. Now as I mentioned, the customization on the Loop Deck Creative Tool is just unreal. Like you can do just about anything. So I'll jump back into the Loop Deck configuration, and you'll notice here when I'm in my editing panel, uh, one thing I didn't say is you can actually also have gestures for this larger wheel. So for example, if I push on this and let's say I want shadow tint, when I'm in my editing tool, you'll notice, let me just jump right here, um, go back to editing. So I'll go to editing. And then you'll notice if I gesture, it goes back to shadow tint. So you can customize literally everything. So going back into the loop to configuration, you have your dials, which you can change. Um, you, can, you have the touch part, which is up here, the wheel, all of the round um, little cir circular buttons, and obviously the square buttons, and you can customize this. And not only for Adobe Premiere, as I mentioned, you can do Final Cut Pro, Illustrator, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, and even the system Mac. So for example, if I just pretty much close all this and go over here, I can use this for volume controls. I almost wanna say this is like an extension to your Mac, but like on the touch bar side. So even if you're using, let's say for example, uh, Google Chrome, you can add new tabs, you can create shortcuts and just do a lot of different things. So it's just a very useful tool, not only for editing, but also other applications too. Now, one thing I did notice is the build quality feels very premium. I would say even a step up from the Loop Deck Plus. Uh, something I really like is like the feedback you get with the dials. You can really feel the little clickiness the knob when you're scrolling, I like that. I mean, this is something that you don't get with a keyboard, so it's nice to have. All of the buttons, everything, the tactile feedback I think is great. I also like the fact that they do have a USB Type-C for power, that's actually a welcome upgrade. 
So some final thoughts. I really love the user interface, the customization that the Loop Deck Creative Tool offers. I don't feel like it's a one size fits all solution like most editing panels out there. And I love the fact that it will adapt to your needs and your workflow. I think that's really the key point here. If you guys have any questions regarding the Loop Deck Creative Tool, hit me up in the comments section down below. I will leave more information in the description. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching. You guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.